Is dating different depending on what generation you're from? Hey, Jason here. If you've been watching the channel, you're seeing me through Africa and you're now seeing me talk about and open up about how I had a successful marriage for 10 years, what it felt like, what are the things that I did to get that marriage successful. And I want to just share wisdom with other guys out there because there's too much lies and manipulation out here that are feeding guys the wrong information when it comes to a relationship. And so I just wanted to start sharing that information. And so let's go ahead and dig into today's video. And so this one is coming from my last video, Are Black Women, Black American Women Undesirable Now? And the reason why I'm doing this video is I saw some of the comments and one, I don't think people actually listen. Active listening is something that we actually have to learn to do. Uh, we don't just automatically know how to active listen. And what I mean by that is, is listening for wisdom, listening for nuggets, not listening for something to be a, a opposition of. Uh, most of us have been taught through the American education system, which is something the whole world goes through, is to actually listen to oppose things, not to actively listen and take nuggets away. And so I got one of these, um, this comment, and I'm going to just read it from the video. If you've been married for a long time, you don't understand. If you're older than 40 years old, you don't understand. Stop giving advice and seek understanding. This video isn't wrong. He's just speaking from an older married man view. Now, let me first break that part down. I'm no longer married. Uh, if this person would have actually listened to my video, I said it believe, two to three times. My wife passed away in Medellin, Colombia two years ago in January of 2022. She died in my arms. Uh, so I am no longer a married man. I am given the viewpoint and talking from a person who is now newly single, who has went through the healing, put in the time to get over the passing of my wife and now back in the dating scene. And he said, um, the world has changed. You haven't dated in decades. You don't get it, bro. No offense, but you really don't. And that's a funny thing to me because I've been dating for this last few months. I've been actively dating going on dates, meeting women of different uh, backgrounds, different ages. And so I don't know what I don't get. <laughs> so someone please help me on this. I think what a lot of men are not getting is there is a way to court women. There's a way to date women. And there is a way to build and establish a relationship. The first thing that everybody need to come to grounds with, this is men and women, is everybody out here is not for you. We all have our personal biases and there's nothing wrong with that. I have the type of woman that I like. I know the type of woman that I like. I don't negate from anything that is not what I like. I have my preference. Women have the right to have their preference. You as a man have the right to have your preference. So first off, what is your preference of woman that you're dating? Now, most people, when they hear that word or that question of what is your preference of a woman that you want to date? Because you watch all these little dating coaching shows and they never correct them. They're always saying, well, I want someone that's loyal, someone that's submissive, someone that's going to be there, that's caring, that's going to love me. What does that mean? Those words do not mean the same for everybody. What is loyalty to you? What does that look like in an action? A relationship is an action based between two people. So just saying you need to be loyal, that doesn't mean anything. Just saying you need to be submissive, that doesn't mean anything. What does that mean to you? Because you don't know what type of household someone grew up in. They're, what loyalty look like to them may be something totally different than what it looks like to you. And so what do you really want? What is your preference? First, you need to define that and you need to dig deep. If you ever done the nine layers deep, it's a, like a psychological uh, thing of seeing what your goals are, what the things that you want and desire. If you're big into professional development, you may know what I'm talking about. You need to do that for your relationship. So my late wife, Cece, and I, this was one of the things that we did when we were building our marriage. We wanted to make sure our marriage was able to survive. When we both decided to get married, we told each other, divorce is not an option. We will figure it out. 
If we have to spend every dime that we need to make sure that our marriage is good, we will do that. If we need to go to therapy, counseling, to be in this, this professional development, screaming up and down, we will do whatever it takes. And because we were willing to take those steps, this is how we were able to build a healthy, happy marriage. It didn't just happen because we signed papers and said, oh, I love you. I love you doesn't mean anything. Let me be very clear. It means nothing. The words I love you is an irrational emotion. Like most people, if you love your partner, love your kids, love your parents, love your siblings, if you love someone, you'll be willing to sacrifice your life for them. That goes against all the fundamentals of, of the uh, animal kingdom. You're not supposed to be willing to sacrifice your life for someone. That is how love is an irrational emotion. You are willing to sacrifice everything for that person that you love. And so that is not enough. And also, let's all just, just ask this question. You can nod with me if you want to. You can say, yeah, you're right. Or just agree with me silently. Do we all know people who are in love and they're in the most toxic relationship you've probably ever seen in your life? I know I've known a few people. Anybody that knew my middle brother, <laughs> they probably like, yeah, that, that fool was in love with a lot of women, but man, that was not a type of love I want to see. And so we have to throw love, loyalty, some of these words out of the window and redefine them. What does the actions of loyalty look? So like for me as a man, when I was in my marriage, and I even carry this part on to me uh, to this day, my act of loyalty is I'm going to be at home at night. I'm not going to be out here partying. I'm not going to be out here clubbing. I'm not coming home drunk. Like, I'm not doing those things. I want you to know that I'm safe and sound. I'm in the house. I'm not doing these crazy things out here. And those are the same things that I ask for a person that I'm dating. Is, hey, don't be out here getting drunk. Don't be out here going to clubs. All of these different things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, let's go to the other end of the spectrum, because a lot of times we want to stay on just the bad end of the spectrum and not look at the opposite. But this time I gave you the, the good. Let's go look at the bad. Let's say if you're with someone and you tell them, hey, I don't want I don't and you tell them that you don't want them out clubbing, drinking, and doing all of these things. And they're like, you're not going to control me. You're not going to tell me what to do. That right there, it isn't a red flag. It's just that person ex expressing who they want to be, how they want to carry their life. And that's OK. What you have to do as a man or woman is say, you know what? I'm going to let you go and be you. I'm not going to sit here and try to control you what you want to do. Go have fun. Oops. And then when you tell them that, you let them know, I'm not going to be here waiting for you. That is where you're building your preference. Like, Yes, we all know about our standards, but it's your preference in a relationship that really matters. Like you can have these high standards, say all of this stuff, they need to make this amount of money, they need to do this, they need to cook, they need to clean. It doesn't matter with those things. It's your preference. What do you prefer your partner to do? And so really focus in on that and then really define what do those words look like. And so now I saw a few other comments were saying things such as, Oh, you're dating women your age. You're, they're not the same, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to just be honest with you. I date women in, in their 20s. I date women usually about 25 to about 29. That's the dating range that I'm in right now. Main reason is, one, I don't have kids. So I'm not looking for ready-made families. Uh, I have a, There's women that I've met who have kids that are amazing, beautiful, uh, they're successful, everything. I'm just not looking for ready-made family. I want to build a family from scratch with someone who doesn't have that. So I don't usually date uh, in my age range. And the other thing about, and this is just for the guys, once you turn 40, guys, your age range opens up on both ends. Like uh, from the 20s up to 50, 60, however far you want to go, depending on what your preference is and what you like. Um, and so because that I date a little younger, I'm going to tell you, I don't have problems. Uh, one of the reasons I don't have the problems is because I have an understanding that one, every woman out here is not for me and I am not for them. 
And if I come across someone where it's just not vibing, I let it go. I don't sit there and keep texting. I'm not calling you. I'm not trying to beg you to go on a date. It's like once I see enough things that I don't like, it's like, okay, you don't meet my preference. So I'm going to keep on moving and let me find someone who does, someone who I want to spend my time with. And you have to start being selective like that. Be selective of your time. So many people are so focused on the money, the money, the money. If you were more focused on how you're spending your time, you wouldn't waste as much money on a man or a woman because you wouldn't be doing the things that you don't want to do. You wouldn't have to worry about going out, buying drinks for her and her friends or paying his rent or getting him a car. You know, all of this stuff that you hear nowadays, you will start seeing like, this ain't waste my, worth my time. Like, my time is valuable. I can tell you for me personally, I don't waste my time on people. Um, and it's just a level that I've come to. And it's not really just my age. It's one, I'm a Iraq war veteran. I was in the military, went to the Iraq war. Life is precious for me. I know how short life is. And so for me, knowing how short life is, I don't waste my life on anyone. And I don't waste it on friends, family, and I'm sure not going to waste it on strangers trying to get to know. And I would really say, if you take anything from this video, please listen to that part. Don't waste your life on people. You need to live your life to the fullest because once it's over, you don't get a second shot at this. It's not a video game. It ain't a TV where you just cut it off, cut it on, or you replay. That's it, man. Like, that's really it. So focus on what you want to do with your time. Life is very precious. And then, let me see. There was another comment on here. Let me read it for you. Because there was, it was a couple of good ones. And I think a lot of this stuff is, a lot of us don't realize how we're being duped into psychological warfare. Uh, a lot of us are just being duped for money also. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. 90% of these people out here on the internet that's giving advice, they're just trying to get money off you. That's why they're toxic. That's why they're yelling, screaming, beating their chest. These guys are fake. A lot of these women are fake. They're not telling you the appropriate things to do. They're not telling you how to do things correctly. And if you really want to learn from someone, Go to listen to Judge Lynn Tolbert. She has a book called My Mother's Roots. Great book. I used to read it every day, actually, uh, while I was married. It was a really good book and explained a lot. And so here we go. Uh, no, not that one. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Bro, you're a completely different generation. The women your, your age generally don't, generally don't have the modern women mindset. This is so far from the truth. The older you get, the more modern your mindset is, actually. And what I mean by that is a modern mindset is just composed of three things. You want to be comfortable. You want to be secure. And you want to ease your life. No one in their 40s, 50s, and 60s want to be struggling. Nobody in that age group want their significant other to be out here drinking, partying, and doing dumb stuff. Like, when you start understanding how much work and effort you got to put in to make dollars, to pay your rent, to pay your water bill, to pay the gas in your car, you don't have time to just be seeing somebody blow that away. Like, sometimes the things that I see people blow money on, I'm like, bruh, if I would have had the knowledge that I had when I was your age and I'm in my 20s in the military, I would be a multimillionaire right now. So they have more of a modern mindset. Like a lot of people think modern mindset means, oh, I want the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci. No, that's not it. That's keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> that's a whole nother psychological problem right there that is caused through uh, struggles, hardships, depending on what economic um, economic level of society they're living in. That's a whole totally different thing you're dealing with right there. That is not modern mindset. In fact, most traditional people are some of the most frugal people in the world. And they're actually usually more conservative. Like we have to start understanding that 
how many of us have grown up being programmed through TV now? Like uh, me and an Uber driver, we were having a talk today because we were uh, exchanging books that we're reading. And we both came to the conclusion, like, man, it's sad that a lot of black, black Americans and black people in general, we don't read as a whole generation anymore. We're not that nation we used to be in the 40s and 50s. You know, we're not having book studies, book clubs, things of that nature. And that's one of the things that a lot of us do not realize. TV is set to program us to feel like we're ugly, to feel like we're poor, and to feel like we're missing out. So we got to live for the moment. Live for the moment. You need to live for the two or three generations. We need to go back to some of these old African and Indian proverbs of living for generations after uh, past us. And what I mean by that is that's a, mod- a true modern mindset. When you're thinking about your great grandkids and how what you can pass down to them, that's a modern mindset. Thinking about what Louis Vuitton shirt or what wallet I can get or what watch I can wear, that isn't modern. That's just keeping up with the Joneses. That is a whole psychological thing. If you ever read, um, it used to be the video on um, YouTube. It was called How to Sell the Negro. It was a propaganda video that the U.S. government used to market for the civil rights to get white business owners on board. They broke down psychologically how black families are. They also broke down how those black families, you can start taking their generational wealth by promoting and letting them be able to buy certain goods. It's the same system that's in play. We're not playing some new game. Like, there's nothing modern about that. That's something that's been used since the 60s when they first started breaking down the black families. And so to call that a modern mindset now is really not. That's a very old, antiquated mindset. And it goes deeper into uh, colonization. And so if you really want a modern woman, you want someone who's frugal. You want someone who's about budget. You may want someone who's an entrepreneur. And let me just, before I end this video, let me just go on this with preferences. Really understand what type of woman you want. I know so many men out here say, I want a woman that cooks and clean. She needs to respect me as a man. But do you respect yourself as a man? Are you cooking and cleaning for yourself? Or are you just eating takeaway every day? Like, those are the things that you have to understand. What we do in relationships, we cater to what we see the person's regular lifestyle is. So, like, for me, while I was married, and I still do this now, I cook most of the time. I don't like to eat a lot of takeaway. I'm not into the fast food generation. I like to have home-cooked meals. So any woman that I'm dating, she usually naturally will have a date day in the house, where we're cooking together, something like that. Like, start implementing those type of things. If you want a woman to cook for you, start having a date day where you're all going grocery shopping or surprise her, be like, hey, let's have a Mexican theme tonight or send her some YouTube videos or Instagram videos of things that you can make. And then you buy the ingredients and say, hey, let's have a date day inside and let's just cook together. And watch how she'll light up. She'll want to please you and like, when pe- once a woman starts to see what you value, she will start doing those things so you feel more value. And that's how you're going to feel more respect from it. And so I hope you really got some value from this. And if you're a married guy or if you're someone who's in a successful relationship, leave comments down below and let some of these guys know what are the, some of the things that you're doing to help your relationship grow. Like, yes, it's all nice and cute when you have a lot of engagement of people just opposing you or, oh, you're this, this, that, you don't understand. But we need to start understanding how to use social media better. It's ways for us to learn from the wisdom of others that's walking the same steps that we're walking. There's nothing new in the dating game. I'm pretty sure this has been going around since the beginning of man. Uh, There's nothing new in catering to a woman. There's nothing new in courting to a woman. There's nothing new into feeling valued as a man. Uh, let's just get a lot of this stuff that TV has programmed us, that the history has programmed us to believe 
And let's just start really listening and learning from people who are taking those steps before us. Because you can learn a lot faster from the mistakes of someone else instead of thinking you know better and you're going to have to make those mistakes over and over and over again. And unfortunately, a lot of people are never learning from those mistakes. And so I hope you got some value from this. And just remember one thing, I'm Jason, and success is simple once you know how.